I think that is everything on my part just now. So I'd like to introduce John Simpson, who will be talking us through the practical book writing. Thanks very much, Sarah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you put the slides up? Yep, yeah, two seconds. Please, Sarah. Yes, sorry, hang on. Just, just to give everyone a bit of a background. Um, Absolutely. As Sarah mentioned, my name's John Simpson. I, I, I'm a freelance bid writer, bid manager. I've been in the bidding world for uh, just over 15 years now. Uh, started in civils and construction with the company, doesn't exist anymore, but a current company at the time called Carillion, or just prior to them actually with Alfred McAlpine that, that Carillion took over. And all too often uh, on key bids, it was quite normal at the time to have a 24-hour a, a session before the bid was actually submitted, um, where during that time, uh, an awful lot of writing or rewriting was actually taking place. A very poor structure, a very poor process. Uh, and after that, obviously, uh, people have, be, uh, uh, have got used to the APMP process, which has certainly improved that situation. But at that time, uh, in those first few sessions, I don't know about what other people have faced, but I used to panic. Um, you know, everything just seemed to go out the head. I'm thinking, how can I actually draft this response when you know the, the the brain is empty? So, whilst you might wish that situations like that have um, dissipated and gone away, unfortunately, that's not the case, though, is it? Um, and this session has come about. It's not a training session. It's pure, purely based on experience and how things have changed and what actually works for me. Uh, and if there's any things that come up during the conversation, uh, during the presentation, that work for you too that might work for you too then that's great um but all, all too often still uh, we are um parachuted in either at last minute or we get directors who come along in the last few days on a final red review uh and say no i want to rewrite or somebody might have gone might be off sick um who was initially drafting a response or you just can't get hold of them for any for the information that you need to actually draft it so these are just some of the points, some of the process, some of the, the ways I, I go through that when the APMP process, you followed it to that point, but unfortunately, last minute changes have dictated. So thanks very much, Sarah. Um, so what I'm going to go through, the assumptions, as, as I highlighted, that the process APMP is still used throughout the rest of the bid. Um, it's just in, I'm just talking about the, the, the final few days before actual submission where things haven't quite gone according to plan. So I'll cover off some tips and tools that I use, um, how I actually approach getting the actual information as well as actually drafting the response as well. Um, but first of all, Dave, if you can, ne next slide, Sarah, if you can do that survey with the question, just want to find out up front to begin with who's actually been in this position so far. Can to the poll, access them. Yeah, I say John, the, the polls in the bottom right of the corner, the, the three triangles. Right, so okay. I uh, hope, hope you can all see that on the bottom right hand side of the uh, the screen. You've got a triangle, a square, and a circle. If you just click on that and the polls in there. How long have we got to complete that, David? Uh, as long as you like, to be fair, but I suggest we give it another sort of... We've got a few bits coming now, so nine votes, ten votes, so I reckon another ten seconds or so, and then we'll, we'll take a look at the, the uh, results. Okay. Okay, John, so you've got ten votes at some times, one vote all the time, and two votes saying no. Well, all the time. Right. Okay. That's, that, that's a difficult one then. <laughs> okay. Um, it just gives a bit of a, an overview as to who's been in that situation so far. Those that haven't experienced it, you're very lucky. Well done. Um, so just some key points to remember, first of all, and as that graphic actually shows, don't panic. That's the key message here. You know, don't forget, breathe, um, take a step back. In situations like this, sometimes you can actually anticipate it actually happening. You know, if they haven't um, been responding to um, phone calls or emails when you've been looking for information. Um, if you know a director who might uh, just come in at last minute, you sometimes, unfortunately, they 
do you like to change things? Um, so occasionally you can anticipate when it will, might happen. But the most important thing is just go back to basics. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, the normal process does apply. You're just trying to change the time frame in the way things actually happen. And your not, mind does know more than what it's actually telling you at that stage as well. Um, so what are we actually trying to do? Um, in the early days, for me, it was a matter of, can I find a, a similar response that's already been submitted? Can I cut and pay, or copy and paste? Can I, uh, I had the thought process of, well, any response will do, um, but that's not the case, is it really? Um, we still have to put forward a compelling response. We all know that the, the world of bidding has become very, very competitive. So if we don't do a good job, then somebody else will win. And that's the last thing we enjoy for to happen, really. So it is about the state of mind. It is about focusing, gather your thoughts, and just having to think about initially what you need to do next. And don't panic. So coming on to the, 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 the main bits, really. Um, establishing what you have to do. Now, I'm a great believer in uh, silence is golden. And when you get moments like this, it's, all, it's, all, it's easy to do when we're actually working from home. Um, but when you are working from an office or when we start going back into the office, that situation changes again, doesn't it? So if you can find a, a quiet location, um, uh, an office that's empty, or whether you actually work in an office that's empty, uh, a small corner office at the moment. But just start to write everything down. Now, for me, I use hundreds of post-it notes. Um, mm -hmm. They are, I, I, I do find that they are a bit of a saviour, but by colour coding and prioritising, they help me to distinguish just what's, what I need to get done first. But clear your desk of non-urgent issues. Now, it's important that during that phase, because you have a response to write, that response can take you quite a while, but you've got to get all the information first, etc. So you need to ensure that you can share the load. If there is somebody or some other individuals that can take some of the other tasks that you were due to do off you, um, you need to start asking for help. When you actually commute, when you actually start talking to either the bid manager, bid director, whoever's actually in charge of the, the overall bid, then it's important that you communicate that message to them as well. The priority, as I say, is is in the response or responses. If there's more responses, if there's more than one. Um, when you are trying to communicate with people, though, um, don't rely on emails. Unfortunately, these days, all too many people do pick up a phone and harass people. Be persistent. At the end of the day, unless, unless you are persistent, unless you can offload some of that information, it's just going to distract you and be a bigger weight on your shoulders. So even if it takes you an extra five or 10 minutes, keep doing it, be persistent and pass the uh, share the load. When you talk to your bid manager, uh, bid director, like I say, whoever's in charge of the bid, request that additional support. And what I mean by that is if, if you were in the situation where um, you've been passed a response to right where either someone's gone off sick um, or they have, or somebody else hasn't actually provided that information, you need to gather that information, don't you? So you need to be pointed in the right direction as to who will help you. Now, they may not be the obvious people. May, if you're in construction, it may be people who are actually on site. It may be uh, in people in other offices. It doesn't matter where they are, but you need to be pointed in the right direction if you don't know who they are already. And initially, just advise them. Um, that you need support. You don't need to go into in, uh, into all the details because you don't have everything at that point. But just advise them. You need you will be calling on them, um, and that if they can set time aside uh, when you come back to them. So it's just warming them up. All right, you're not going to them cold after that. The next point is just review your position and what your commitments are again. Clear your mind. Turn your phone off. Like I say quiet office. Up to this point, hopefully, um, you've gone through the normal process, you've completed your storyboard, you may even have had some information uh, and, and initial uh, pink review, etc. So you, hopefully you have that structure there already for your response. If not, 
um, then clearly it is going back to a stage where you need to find those individuals who can compile and help you with that actual structure, look at the information that's actually needed. Um, so it's confirming who, um, the, the, the general details, the actual structure for it, and when you need to actually complete it by. Now, the next part, you're on the right-hand side there. For me, I don't know if anybody else has actually used mind maps at all, but I find them a very big aid when it comes to situations like this. It's a way that I can do a bit of a brain dump to begin with and then structure it by using a mind map and then being able to, whether you colour code it, prioritize, however you actually want to uh, prioritise it. You can do it on a whiteboard. You can get the software downloaded onto your um, laptop, computer, however you might want to actually want to go about it. You may want to just do it in a different way, but for me, a mind map actually works. You can tag all the associated tasks that need to go with the key points that have to be actually achieved. Next part is once you've determined what your initial plan is, set timeframes against it. But it's timeframes that you have to be realistic, uh, timeframes that you um, need, can and need to work to. But you need to be hard with those timeframes as well, being in the situation that you're actually in. Once you've actually done that, take a step back, review that plan. Is there anything that you've missed? Even at times, get somebody, a colleague to, to just to help and go through it just to see if there's anything that you've actually missed as well. And then you're going through the same process again. Is there anything on there that you yourself don't need to do that once again, you can pass on to somebody else that is not relevant to the response that you're actually going to be drafting? A key point, you, I will keep mentioning it all the way through, is taking that time to actually take a step back. It's all too often we don't breathe. We just motor through because we think we have to. But if anything, that stop, take a breather, summarise, have you got it right? Have you got everything you actually need is the most important step as you're actually going through. It took me quite a while to actually get used to doing it, but it is a key point. And then the final point on there is actually gain commitment. Now, I mentioned about you've already spoken, ideally, you've already spoken to those who you might be calling on to get help with for this, uh, to get the information that you need to draft the response. Arrange time slots with them, you know, at your time frames, okay, ideally not theirs, because it's you who's has a, a shorter time frame to actually complete things. Um, if you can't get commitment from those individuals, then you just need to take a few steps back. Don't panic. Don't, don't think you've got a motor ahead without them. Go back a few steps. Go back to the bid manager. Go back to whoever's in charge of the actual bid and say, right, can't have them. I need somebody else. Who else can help me? The key point is you're not in it on your own. You're there as part of a team. You might feel on your own, but you are part of a team. Just ask for help. Next slide, please, sir. OK, so when it comes to the actual information then, as mentioned earlier on, one of the first things I used to do uh, when I was a bit green behind the ears was look for uh, previous responses. Personally, I'm not a great believer in, in using previous responses. It's OK for a, a process that might be in there or even some graphics. But one thing you don't know when you're looking at a past response is, was it successful? You don't know whether it was actually whether the bid actually uh, was awarded or not. Um, so where you can try not to use them, apart from for those couple of areas, like say process um, or a, a graphic, it is best to start from scratch. Certainly don't go down the route of copying and pasting. So with all the contributors, um, get your storyboard have a run through yourself of exactly what you need. Prepare your questions that you might want to ask the contributors before you actually speak to them. Get everything ready. Be prepared yourself in your own head because the last thing you want to be doing is keeping going back to people. Just get all that information because you've only got a short period of time to do it. So break that storyboard down into sections. 
And one of the reasons for breaking it down to sections as well is so that you can have time to, even if you're just going to go and make a brew, but it's taking that step back. Have you got everything that you need so far? Just double checking so that when you get to the end of it, you have all of that information. But when it actually comes to gaining that information, for me, I like to use Teams. Now, there might be some other format that you want to use, whether it's this, Google, um, whichever, Skype or whichever. But the one thing I like about Teams is that you can record it. And I, as with this presentation, record all your meetings. And the reason behind that is that um, I like to focus on the questions I'm going to ask and challenge some of the information that I'm being provided with rather than trying to scribble and make notes as people go through and forget things. So by recording it, um, then it gives you an opportunity to go back into it later on, uh, review it before you actually start drafting, just to make sure that you understand the information that's actually being provided. But if you can't use uh, Teams, then even if you do it on a phone or a, uh, an iPad or your laptop, find some way of recording those conversations because it will help you later on. I don't know if anybody else has been in the situation where they've tried to have that conversation, get information, scribble in notes, and then you're trying to understand your notes at the end of it. It doesn't always work. Certainly not for me. The key point there as well is keep to the plan. Don't let others distract it. Don't let them try and pass things back or tell you where information might be kept. You know, be persistent, be demanding. Tell them that, that they need to provide you have too much to do and too much information to acquire to be chasing around in different locations where you might not find that information that they're, they're highlighting. So it really is fostering that relationship with them and get them to uh, help and support you uh, rather than just throwing it back at you. Once you got to that stage, once again, it's important to review it. Go all the way back through that storyboard, the sections you drafted, you broke the storyboard down into, the individuals you've um, discussed everything with, got the information from, have you got all the right information? Is there any additional information you do need to, what I mean by that is questions that you might not have asked at the time, then just go back to them just to make sure you have it. That's the final situation where, the final time really, once you've, had, once you've gone through all of those discussions, just to verify and check it. Once you're happy, and that's the key point, which once you're happy with the information that you have, you can then move on. Next slide, please, sir. So the main part, really, all, all that all that you've gone through so far is, is just the build-up, isn't it? It's just like any other response that you're actually writing, but what you've all you've had to do is cram it in. But I don't know what you're like at actually writing, but for me, my brain at times um, does tend to go quicker than my fingers. So I'll come back onto that point in a minute. But once again, if you're in that quiet room, ideal. If you're not in that quiet room, get into one. If you're working from home, great. If it's no noise cancelling earphones that you put on or some other way that you, that you find that peace and quiet, you will need it. It's just like any other response that you're trying to write. When you come to um, the, the response, what well, I say summarize, but break it down once again, break it down into sections, break it down to a point where you can have a break, you can review what you've actually done, but you can double check on the, uh, verify the information, uh, the recordings that you had, make sure you've actually taken everything from them um, before you actually keep going. But one my way, one of the key points that one of the main things that I use when I'm actually drafting response, these days I use it for nearly all responses. But certainly in situations like this, because my fingers don't work as fast as my brain, um, I know some might put that down to age, but you know, um, I won't go into that one. Um, I use I dictate. Now I use drag and dictate. I know some can use it or some can use have the facility on their laptops to do it. I started off by using the, the basic package with, with uh, Dragon Dictate, uh, which was 20 or 30 quid. Now I've got a, uh, the professional version because I've seen the benefits of it. But that's a simple way of um, producing a document that, that types as you talk. It means I, it, it's 
considerably quicker for me to do that than it is to type everything out. Um, it also means that I, as things are progressing, I can actually review it and go back to a relevant section and input more information. Um, I don't know whether anybody else uses a, a dictator, well, a, any dictation software at the moment. Um, and if you do, then please uh, maybe add a comment later on your experience with it. But that's the key point for me with this is the ease that that enables, uh, that it actually provides. The, the document that it actually produces at the end of it is one that you can easily review, amend, put into a more of a, a definitive structure, format it so it becomes the finished article before you put it into whatever template you need to put it into. Um, it's a far easier way of drafting that response uh, and being able to review it for speed than typical typing away. Um, once you've actually got that document at the end of it, double check that against your storyboard. Um, like I say, you know, have you got everything in there? Go back to the process and, and re review every stage. Now, I know that what I've actually covered there is uh, quite a, um, a, a simple process, it, but it's based on my experience. It's not a training, you know, it's not a training saying this is what you should do. Hopefully, there's a couple of nuggets in there just to help you, especially that. <laughs> especially the individual who's, who's faced with that situation all the time. There are certain, there are many tools there to help you. But for me, simple things are what count. It's taking that time, remove the pressure off your shoulders. Don't back yourself into a corner. There are easier ways to try and tackle it that will perhaps work for you. That mind mapping stage for me can easily be expanded where rather than just noting each individual action down the, an A4 pad or an iPad um, and easy to prioritize from there. Keep warming people up to saying you're going to need help and finding out from them when they're going to be available and if that fits in with you before you actually go back and say, right, I need your help. Uh, it's little things like that that make it easier for you to do. But the, like I said, the, the final bit, that that dictating a response once you have the information in, does make or would make your life life easier uh, when you actually come to that final section. Okay, thanks very much. And if anyone's got any questions, then please fire away. No. A quick one from me, John. Um, Hi, Tara. Uh, how oh, do sorry. You, how do you, sorry, go on, far away. How do, you, how do you deal with the real intransient sort of subject matter experts when what you get back from them is is really, you know, you've asked for some basic details so you can craft a response around, but you literally get back off a dozen words. How would you deal with that? Um, it depends on what subject they they are they the only individual for for a start that can provide that information um I, when that has happened in the past i explain the situation we're in um and that i need more information from them and i need more of their time it is a priority um you know sometimes you gotta go back to basics and whilst they may be frustrated with people continuously asking them for information for bids and everything you're having to do it for a reason um and if they can provide that information in a, perhaps a different format or can recommend somebody else to provide the information as well would be helpful thank you does that help yes i think it, it uh, it's it's a, an approach i've used i'm just I've started to get to the point now where, um, and it's awful to say, but sometimes Google is my friend when I get back <laughs> kind of half a dozen bullet points with lots of TLAs. You know, there's there's a great deal of value you can get from from looking into Google. So I just wondered if there was a, a the, different the, approach, but no, that the, makes the, sense. Pushing the, back. There is, but there are, to me, there are always people, and Google can be a great source of information. Um, I've certainly used it in, in the past myself, but there are people, individuals within every business who, um, have that information. Um, maybe they don't understand the priority. 
Uh, maybe somebody else needs to speak to them to, to provide that information. Maybe they're having issues on that particular day that you've spoken to. But as a backup, I, I do always ask and say, right, okay, you're obviously don't have the time, but is there somebody else who can fill in the gaps that you're you're not providing me the inf uh, providing the information for? Um, sometimes that embarrass you're not you're not trying to embarrass people, but sometimes that does embarrass them. Um, it's not like I say, it's not the intention, but sometimes saying things like that it, it it does solicit a little bit more information that's good advice thank you you're welcome hi hi john it's faye hi faye um hello i thought i'd just throw it out there sort of giving the i work as a uh, freelance bid manager and one of the things i think that's also relevant for bid writing is that communication that you talked about earlier that it's really important that the team communicates with each other and the bid manager's role yeah. in that as well is helping the bid writers to get the information that they need rather than you know many bids i see writers are brought in um to solution and that's not the role of the bid writer you know whilst mm. google can be your friend it's definitely not your job to come up with the with the solution for the, for the bid so i think it's back to that initial early conversation with your team to say, right, what blockers are you facing? What do you need me as the bid manager to help you uh, free yep. up your time and help escalate any issues? So just, just to reiterate what you said, really, that it's a two-way exchange and just being really clear that you manage the expectation up front and don't be afraid to say, we're not getting the information we need, folks. We can't we can't do this without your help, you know? It is important. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a big enough uh, responsibility to actually write the responses anyway. You know, you you... As a writer, you can't take everything onto your shoulders. If you have the time and you're going through the normal process and you can go through storyboard and reviews and everything, that's a different situation. But when you're in the last minute, you know, two days before submission, three days, even last day of submission, you know, you don't have time to do everything and you need to offload, you need to liaise with your bid manager, bid director, whoever is in charge of that bid. So I totally agree with you, Faye. Are there any other questions at all? Any more? No. Um, hi, hi. This is hi. Krishna from Capri. Hi. Uh, hi quick Krishna. question. So, you know, we also do loads of bit writing for our own business and development, yeah. and uh, I've noticed that the scoring, uh, the way they score it. And even after, so last two or three attempts, we've gone through a whole question, understood the question, and then split that into questions. So they're making sure that our answer, on, we, when we respond, we answer each line properly. And usually they are 2,000 words or some 3,000 words or 1,500 words kind of thing, a large, big one. And still, when we come back, the winning bid is like, you know, they score four or five, and we score two or three. I was like thinking, what the hell? I've done I've, or I didn't do that. So is there any anything you can tell us that yeah, how to improve the quality of our response? Uh, we have the skill set, we have the technology to support us. We know we can do that uh, work uh, better than the person who won that. But the response, the quality of the response, probably they just score it very low or something like that. OK, um, <laughs> that, that can be a whole other session, I'll be honest. Um, okay. I'll wait for and, that, invite that in that case. Yeah, I, it, how you actually structure it, it there, there are um, specific training sessions for uh, structuring a, a natural response. So okay. I, I, I could, today I can only talk from personal experience um, and, and, and how we actually go about things, but that is an area that is does require proper training. Um, because it's different. I wouldn't say the structure is different for every type of response by any means. But when one of the first areas that's tackled is the storyboarding and the the structure, the, the templates of the document, because that's that leads you into um, how you section that actual that response out. But like I say, I don't want to ignore it by any means. But that. It's certainly not the purpose of what we're looking at today, but the structure is um, a separate training session. And what I would suggest to you, you do is just have a word with Dave, if, if Dave's still on, is just about looking at that area um, yeah. uh, for uh, at a future time. It's not something we can easily cover, really, in, That's in five That's or ten minutes. And, and, and so I think that is one area I think people will be benefited because when we start writing those responses, and again, and this is, this is again... Like you said, if you're a bid writer or if you are 
you know the multiple people are involved in that thing and for small organization like us uh, yep. we need to wear multiple hats and we need to do everything you know from finance to uh, pricing yep. to you know technology and everything we need to pull together everything so somewhere we either we are diluting our in the quality of response later on the towards the question number 10 uh, or something is happening but yeah that that's something which we can if Yeah, I mean, it, so sometimes it comes down to structure. Sometimes it comes down to the the terminology that's used in the response uh, and the language. Um, sometimes it comes other other areas as well. It depends on what the evaluators are actually looking for mm. um, and taking that forward. So there's more than just a simple answer to that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Just, yeah. just Dave, what, Dave, if you can. Yeah, I mean, away. just just picking up with what John and uh, Christian are saying. Um, you know, part of the community we have on LinkedIn is around supporting people and us helping people communicate and finding better ways to do stuff. Um, okay. So if anybody has suggestions or problems that they're encountering all the time and want us to run one of these webinars on a particular topic, then uh, I would drop me a DM, give me a shout, my phone's on, all this sort of stuff. So um, we'd be happy to have a conversation about yeah, how we can yeah. do that and then if you outline your problem then you know i can talk with Faye and john and a few other guys and then um see what we can do okay so Thank yeah you. no problem thank it was good thanks john thanks but there, john. no christian there there are people you know there to help but it's just we need more we would need more time to go through it today than okay. uh, than those sure. available sure thank you you're welcome any other questions at all yes yes please john i've got one question Fair um well. You uh, talked about the importance of the sort of review and rewrite process um, earlier. <clears throat> I just wondered if you'd ever worked in an organization where perhaps a lot of people don't comprehend the importance of it and how, how did you overcome that? Um, yes, uh, to, to the question. Uh, been involved in organizations that don't necessarily understand the bidding world they think it's quite a simple thing to do um and the only way to uh, overcome that is to try and educate them um and bring them into a bid early looking at exactly what's actually required uh looking highlighting what we actually need to go through to get the finished article it's not just five minutes to write a response um not not if we want to win Uh, and just remind them, I suppose, the importance of actually winning it, what what it means to the business, uh, not something we can just easily pass off. So certainly being in those organisations, but to me, the only way is education uh, in whatever I, format that takes. Yeah, because because I find that um, in, in those instances, that is where you tend to get the answers right at the last minute because they don't don't appreciate that you require time to review and rewrite them. Yeah, I mean, their priorities are never the same as yours. But by bringing yeah. them in early, um, then it helps them to try and understand what you're having to face. They may, yeah. Whether they take it on board, you know, that, that's that's down to them. But by by involving them all the way through and just um, highlighting the, the everything that needs to be done to produce that finished article, it hopefully changes their mindset. Okay, thank you, John. You're welcome. But it, as part of any bid as, any bid as well, if, they, if they're providing information, then ideally they should be involved from the storyboard session anyway, yeah. uh, whether they're just a contributor or whether they are um, uh, helping in any other way. And perhaps another way of, of if, if they're, uh, at a, depends on what position they hold, but you might want to try and involve them in, in the reviews Uh, yeah. that take place during the actual bidding process. And then if they've got things to include, uh, then perhaps don't want to be embarrassed because they've not provided that information. Yeah, I think um, I think uh, the problem I've had is that um, although people are involved from the uh, free, from the early part of the process, because of other, you know, because they're busy as well, you know, they've got other yeah. things on their plate. Um, they're, stri they're spread quite thinly. So... Um, trying to get them to keep to the time frame is difficult because yeah. quite frankly they haven't got the time and that and that's kind of you know I just sometimes I feel that even though you try and set it out clearly what um, what is required at an early stage of the process it's just I suppose trying to communicate that 
communicate that properly so they fully understand it may be uh, maybe something where I need to improve perhaps um, yeah, yeah it's not something you can o can overcome overnight by any means uh, and I don't know if anybody else on here has got any thought thoughts on it as well but um, you know it is any measures you can take not everyone is the same some people are more open to um, listening to the, the process and, and trying to understand the process that you're you're taking the business through um, to, to be successful so it's all as Faye mentioned earlier on it's all about being part of one team yeah you know, it doesn't matter what position you're in in a business you are all part of one team especially in a small business so their contribution is 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 valid um, and it does it does start with that education side and getting that message actually across and you're not going to win every battle by any means. No. Um, but, you know, you can certainly make progress. Yeah, I suppose uh, I suppose the, the best way to do it is is really, if you can, provide them with evidence that after you've done a proper review and rewriting process, that you can show that the answer is a lot better, perhaps. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, thanks, John. You're welcome. Cheers, James. Anything else at all from anyone? No. No. Thanks, Krishna. Okay. If that's uh, if nobody else has got any more questions, um, just want to say thank you all for coming on and keep an eye out um, on our group for different events that are going to be coming up. Um, if you're not already a member of the LinkedIn group, search "Use These Better." Um, on LinkedIn, and um, you can, uh, uh, you know, get accepted into the, the exclusive group, which will um, enable you to see what sessions we've got coming up um, over the next sort of couple of months. We have got our, well, you'll be, we're running a sneak preview of our September, our bid September sessions in September. Um, it will be interviews with people in the bid industry at various different levels about their careers, hopes and fears for the industry. So that should be a good one if that's something that you're interested in and get signed up for it. Um, and also there is, before you leave, another poll in the, the box with the triangle, circle and square, um, just to find out if you found this um, live useful. So if you could please go into that and answer that uh, that would be fabulous. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, everyone. Yeah, I think that's it.